A lecture by Bernard Walsh. I must tell you this. I don't have to, I want to. I want to tell you that I've spent so much of my time, of my lifetime imagining this, that this would ever happen to me, that one day I would find myself standing here in front of you all, as I am now behind this wooden, or is it veneered? I think it is veneered or it is some kind of wood, isn't it? A wooden lectern about to deliver a lecture, although I do not think I would call it that. A lecture sounds too, it sounds too something or another, highfalutin perhaps. I might just call it a talk. No. As soon as I say it, I know I don't like the way it sounds as though. I'm trying to lower, shall we say, or to depreciate an expectation you might have already established through your own mind, a sense of whatever it is or whatever it was you were expecting when you came into the room this evening. To enter a room, into any room, I think one is invariably filled with a sense of what to expect, as we tend to, I think, to think ahead of ourselves, trying to imagine what it, whatever it is that it is, is going to be like. We go into a baker's shop to buy some bread, or into a butcher's to buy some meat, if we eat meat. Into a greengrocer's to buy some fruit and veg. I think that most of us eat fruit and veg. We go into a kitchen to prepare some food, into a sitting room to sit down, into a bathroom to wash our hands. And we go into a bedroom to go to sleep, or to have sexual intercourse, or to masturbate. Anyway, we go into a library to read a book, into a doctor's surgery, to try to find out if there is a cure for whatever it is. We think that there is something wrong with us. And we go into a lecture theatre because we are in search of knowledge. I think that most of us who came into the room this evening are in search of knowledge. I came here because I was invited to. I was invited to speak to you all about some thoughts I have been having recently. I say recently, but I do not know how long it has been but since I first started to have these thoughts. They are not all the same, I mean they are not all the same thoughts as one another, as they tend to, I think, to move around one another a little bit every time I think about them. But they are, I would say, similar, similar thoughts to one another, which are usually about or they are around the same sort of thing. There are so certain themes, shall I say, that emerge, then subsequently occur and reoccur. It's as though I'm trying to make an arrangement of things I want to think about when I'm on my own or when I'm in company. It does not seem to matter which, as these thoughts might occur to me at any time of day or night. And they are, I suppose, whatever it is they are supposed to be which might not even make sense. I mean, what I just said to you then, it might not even make sense for me to say that these thoughts are whatever it is they are supposed to be. It is a fairly innocuous thing for me to say. I know that now. These thoughts are vivid, and I think that they are vivid enough for me to be able to imagine that I can see or I can hear, touch, taste or smell a particular person, place or thing. And it might have been, I do not know, it might have been a moment ago, an hour, a week, a year, 10, 20, or 23 or 24 years ago. I can still bring the same thought or the same thoughts back into my mind to be here with me now if I want to. And at the drop of a hat, it's as though I'm there. I do not know why I keep thinking about the same sort of thing. It is like a mystery to me why I might think about one sort of thing rather than another. Why, for instance, am I thinking about these thoughts that I'm thinking at the moment and no other thoughts other than these thoughts? And what do these thoughts have to do with me? Is this a talk or is it a lecture? And does it matter? That is a good point, isn't it? Does it matter? Does it really matter? If I say, or if we say, that it, whatever it is that it is, is one thing, or if we say it is another, yes, 
I think it does. I think it does matter because the words, the words themselves carry with themselves a history of meaning of all the different ways in which a word or in which words themselves move through and from one another all the time. As time, or so it might seem as though, time itself is moving on. Whilst we, we are, what are we? Whilst we are continuously trying to navigate our own way through the sinuous pattern of language. I have my own sense of whatever it is I think it is. Is it a talk or is it a lecture? Which comes to me after years of studying and then teaching fine art. Fine art as being a specific subject. Although I do not like that word, the word fine, being placed there so intimately and so intricately alongside what I imagine the potential of art to be. Art, which through my mind or through my own way of being able to think through whatever sort of emotion, emotional or physical facility I have, creates a sense of there being such a thing as an infinite possibility that might enable us, as being whatever it is we are being, by being ourselves as individuals, to unleash a source or a potential force of energy that is already here within us, within ourselves, or within oneself. And I think that this is something we can only develop through an imaginative process that enables anyone, and therefore I would assume that anyone includes everyone, to imagine a transformation has taken place or that it is still taking place between an expression of what an idea is, i.e. that this is what it is, comma, which is whatever it is that it is or that it might be, with an appreciation of whatever it is that the difference is or of whatever it is a difference might be between a notion of whatever it is a subject is which is whatever it is that anyone might be able to imagine that this is what it is, which is whatever it is that it is or that it might be, and the notion of whatever it is an object is, which is whatever it is an object is, which is whatever it is it is supposed to be or that it is supposed to become, through its being that which is whatever it is it is supposed to be becoming, through its being that which is whatever it is that it is being, or that it is still supposed to be becoming through a particular moment of time, where its being that which is whatever it is that it is being, and that which is whatever it is it is supposed to be, are coming into play with one another and at the same time. This way of being, whilst whatever it is that is still being, whatever it is that it is still being, or that it is still becoming, whatever it is that it is still becoming, is called a performance. And it's not always, I mean the performance itself, is not always about it being something that is fine, as in, yes, I think it was a fine performance, or yes, I think it was, or that it is a fine piece of art, or a piece of fine art, which is fine, isn't it? If that is what you want, what you really want, to live in a world that is fine, as in it is okay, isn't it? To want to live in a world that is fine. But sometimes, I think it is better to have to take a little bit of rough with the smooth, to dispel or to try to dispel a particular notion or a particular way of thinking about whatever it is that it is, I think too often complacent. I remember the first day when I arrived at Goldsmiths. I had been offered a job for a year as a maternity cover to teach textiles within the context of studio practice in what was then the Department of Visual Art, which has subsequently become the Department of Art, plain and simple it would seem, or not so plain and simple, as in reality things are rarely ever as plain and simple as they might seem to be. And almost at once I felt as though I was being drawn into a conversation between so many people, 
who were talking to one another about their likes, their dislikes, their insistence or their hesitation. Their wanting to please others or to seek pleasure for themselves. Their willingness to offend those who might have wanted to stop them from doing whatever it was they were doing or to stop them from saying whatever it was they were trying to say. Gradually, and altogether I think, we moved into and through and often across one another's points of view with the greatest of ease, pleasure, pain, irritation, frustration, provocation and exaggeration. So by now, so by now I feel as though I have become familiar, and perhaps I have become too familiar with the ways in which words themselves have enabled me to be, or to become who, or to become whatever it is I think I am, and to be wherever it is I think I am at the moment, while I am standing here in front of you all, as I am now, behind this wooden lectern, about to deliver a lecture. But before I do, or before I go on to say whatever it is I think I am about to say, I think it is customary for me to say a few words to you about myself. Hello everybody, or I might say good evening. My name is Bernard Walsh, and I... I often hesitate at this point while I take a moment or two to think about the situation that is, is the situation that I am in, and to think about the sort of impression I want to make. And while I'm thinking about the sort of impression I want to make, I'm going to look around the room. And I'm trying not to notice anyone in particular, but I cannot help it. I can see that there are a few familiar faces and some intriguing strangers. And I want to smile, but I do not smile, because I do not want to give the game away. And I wonder about that, that phrase, to give the game away. And I wonder, is that what it is? I wonder, is that what I'm trying to do at the moment? Am I trying to give the game away? I do not know anything about that. It sounds too perverse for my liking. And if I did, if I did want to give the game away, I do not think I would tell you that, because I think it would ruin the surprise. I suppose, because that is all I can do, I suppose, but only to an extent. And there you see, I'm at it again. I'm saying something that I do not necessarily understand whatever it is I'm trying to say, but only to an extent. I think I'm trying to operate through a ploy that people often employ, to try to avoid giving a straight answer to what might seem as though it is a more or less straightforward question. Are you happy, for example, is a typical sort of question that anyone might ask. Yes, I say, I suppose I am, dot, 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 comma, but only to an extent. Or are you unhappy? Yes, I suppose I am, dot, 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 comma, but only to an extent. We never get there, do we? We never get to know what it is, unless it is, of course, a little bit of both, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, dot, 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 comma, but only to an extent. Because one wouldn't want to give the game away, now would one, or to tip the balance too far one way or another, which is all well and good. What? What is? Which is all well and good. I do not know what you mean by that. What is all well and good? I mean to say that it is all well and good, isn't it, to try to maintain a balance between a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of whatever else it is or it might be that anyone else might ever want to throw whatever it is that it is or that it might be into the equation. Or well, there's also another phrase that is, at this particular moment of time that is, that is coming into my mind at the moment, which is to hold the peace, as in to hold on to, or to try to hold on to a notion of whatever it is, 
and notion of peace might be. Which is all well and good, isn't it, I suppose, but what about us? Us, yes. What about those of us who, want to, who don't want to have doors onto a specific notion of whatever it is, a specific notion of peace might be? A specific notion of peace that all too often, and I say this through what has been a great deal of my own experience, of having to think about this quite a lot recently. A notion of peace that is, all too often, I think, about us having to listen to other people telling us that this is what a notion of peace is, is whatever it is that they themselves have already decided, and usually amongst themselves, that this is what a notion of peace is, which is whatever it is that they think that this is what a notion of peace is supposed to be. A notion of peace that might not include all of us in the notion of its being that which is whatever it is it is, or that it is supposed to be as equally as it might include some of us. A notion of peace that is, I think, all too often, and there you see, I'm at it again. I'm saying all too often, too often, all too often, all too often, all too often. But I think that this is something I have to say, and to say it as often as I might have to say it, or as often as I might want to say it over and over again. A notion of peace that is, I think, all too often about the interests of a particular group of people who are, or so it might seem as though they are only interested in looking out for or in looking after their own interests. The same group of people who have already, I think, assumed too much power and who try to exert too much control over the way or over the ways others are supposed to live their lives and in accordance with the rules that they invent. I mean, for goodness sake, look at the way they assume those titles for themselves that we are all supposed to recognise. His Serene Highness, Her Serene Highness, Her Most Gracious Majesty, His Most Gracious Majesty, Her Grace, His Grace, Her Excellency, His Eminence, His Holiness. And then there are the robes the ceremonial robes, the wigs, sashes, satin gowns, the medals, jewels, the carriages, cavalcades, the private trains, the private planes, private yachts, and now they have, and would you believe it, they have their own private rockets. A notion of peace that all too often props up a wretched state of affairs that sees other people's suffering become an asset or a means to an end to justify a specific intervention in the name of of whatever it is. Better the devil you know, I suppose. No, I do not suppose it is better the devil you know. I do not suppose it is better to have to count out your despotic villain, whether or not they are already known to you or to us, and in whatever guise it is that they might appear to be. Because it is according to those who become the spokesperson or the spokesman or woman, it is a price worth paying, isn't it, for us to be able to draw a line across a map that puts that lot over there, another lot over here, and if we split that lot up between this lot and that lot, well, that should do it, shouldn't it? No, I do not think that it does do it. I do not think that it will ever do it, and I do not think it is a price worth paying for the rest of us to simply fall in line whilst we listen to whatever it is we are being told, that this is what we're all supposed to think and that this is what we're all supposed to do now. Or what else is there for us to do? Do we show indifference? Or do we feign ignorance? Oh, I did not realise that. Oh, you did not realise what? You did not realise that there are so many levels of injustice, of inequality and discrimination being perpetrated through all sorts of systems that allow for all sorts of pernicious goings on to continuously and persistently propagate themselves in order to maintain a balance of power between a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of whatever else it is that it is or that it might be that anyone else who is interested in taking control over the way that other people are supposed to live their lives might ever want to throw into the equation. All we are saying, yes, I know that. I know that all you are saying is give peace a chance. 
Nice. Isn't it nice? Nice words that sound nice, if you like that sort of thing. Nice words that were, I suppose, well-intentioned enough whenever it was that they were composed. But essentially, I think they are indifferent words that do not add up to that much. Not when you actually think about it. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All we are saying while John and Yoko were lying in their bed in the honeymoon suite at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in Montreal, surrounded by dozens of journalists and various celebrities, cameramen and a sound engineer. All we are saying, words, manufactured to produce a soporific effect. Words that are so obviously and so immediately appealing to come up with a sentiment that no one would want to argue with that, would they? Like a picture of a fluffy kitten that's trying to escape from a wicker basket that has been filled with too many balls of coloured wool. Too many balls of coloured wool that are unravelling before our eyes. So all we have to do now is to write a note, a little note to whoever it is that we are writing a little note to on the inside of the card, then stick a stamp on the envelope and we pop it in the post box. And that is it, isn't it? Have a nice day. Namaste. We tend to just go along with it, don't we? We're doing whatever it is we've been told that this is what we're all supposed to do. To live our lives through so many pointless gestures that have been liberally glazed with sugar soap sentiments that are meant to make us all forget about the sense of, of responsibility we might have to think about whatever it is we're doing or to think about whatever it is we are saying or to think about whatever it is we are singing while we are singing along to the same old, same old dreary selection of anthems. All we are saying is give peace a chance. Then I, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Words, drawing me into a drowsy state of being unable to think about anything in particular, as though all my thoughts are being swept along and occasionally they are bobbing along beneath the rising tide of generality. And all I'm saying is, look at me now, look at me everyone, I am joining in. And all I am saying is, listen to me, listen to me, everyone. I am joining in. And all I'm saying in is, I am joining in. Because it would seem rude not to, wouldn't it? Not to join in with whatever it is we're all supposed to be singing along to the same old, same old, bobbing along, singing a song at the bottom of the beautiful briny, shimmering, shiny, at the bottom of the beautiful briny sea. All together now, all we are saying is give peace a chance. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. So it seemed to me as though I and so many others like me are trying to convince ourselves that we are on the side of something that is good, isn't it? To be on this side, which is on the side of something that is good, isn't it? And yes, of course, we know there are issues. One or two issues that, that we all will have to consider and hopefully resolve as we move from one way of doing whatever it is we're doing at the moment into another way of doing whatever it is we are hoping to do. Through the, through the implementation of a new way of doing things that will inevitably, I expect, involve some changes in terms of our existing personnel and in terms of the current regulations and procedures that we already have in place that will have to be revised and updated in due course. But for now, I think it is good, isn't it, to know that we're on the side of something that is good, isn't it? To know that we are on this side, which is on the side of something that is good. And that it not only looks good, but it sounds good and it also feels good, doesn't it? To know that we're on this side. Unlike those of us who are not on this side, because they will not listen to whatever it is we are trying to tell them. That this is the way it has to be from now on and that there is no other choice in this matter. And they will not follow us on Instagram and they will not try to keep themselves abreast of all the latest goings on that we are discussing through our WhatsApp group and through our, tw and through our Twitter feed and through TikTok. TikTok. 
Then we hear them saying something. We do not like the way it sounds. And we see them doing something. We do not like the way it looks. Then what are we supposed to do? To turn a blind eye? Or do we take an eye, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth? I do not know what I am supposed to do. I do not know what I am supposed to think. I do not know what you are supposed to do. I do not know what you are supposed to think. I suppose it would depend upon the way I feel about, I'm not sure, about the way I might feel about myself, I suppose. And in your case, of course, I suppose it would depend upon the way you might feel about yourself and to what extent you or I might feel as though we are ourselves obliged to join in with whatever it is we're being told that this is the way it has to be from now on and that there is no other choice in this matter, is there? other than to join in with whatever it is we're being told, that this is the way it has to be from now on, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? And I think... And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colours of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky And also on the faces of people passing by I see friends shaking hands, saying how do you do They're really saying, I love you 